with a WWE star fired and more. This is Wrestling Hub. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. With him stepping away as chairman and CEO of WWE earlier in the year, it seems Vince McMahon has more lawsuits coming his way. According to the Wall Street Journal, McMahon is refusing to pay settlements. In a November 3rd demand letter to Mr. McMahon's representative, a lawyer for former wrestling referee Rita Chatterton asked for $11.75 million in damages after she publicly accused Mr. McMahon three decades ago of being her in a limousine. Mr. McMahon has long denied the allegations. The demand letter was reviewed by the Wall Street Journal. Mr. Clune, Ms. Chatterton's current lawyer, said in the demand letter that Ms. Chatterton had passed a polygraph and that multiple sources corroborated her account, two of whom confirmed to the journal that Ms. Chatterton contemporaneously told them about the alleged. John Wisniewski, who wrestled as Greg Valentine, told the journal that Ms. Chatterton disclosed the allegations while the two were sharing a marijuana cigarette in a Marriott hotel parking lot in Albany, New York in the 1980s. Mr. Wisniewski Nisky said he didn't believe Miss Chatterton then or now because he didn't think she was attractive enough for Mr. McMahon. Leonard Intatari, who went to wrestling school with Miss Chatterton, said in a magazine interview published earlier this year that Miss Chatterton was shaking and crying as she recounted the alleged while the two of them stood outside the ring before a 1986 WWF event. Mr. Intatari said in a call with the journal that he stands by his comments and believes her allegations. In a separate November email, Email to Mr. McMahon's attorney, a lawyer from a former spa manager, said that Mr. McMahon assaulted his client in 2011 at a California resort, an incident previously unreported in the media. Mr. McMahon has told people he refuses to pay settlements to Ms. Chatterton and the former spa manager, people familiar with his comments said. WWE's auditor has advised the company that resolutions of the claims, even if confidential, would possibly have to be disclosed by the company publicly, said a person familiar with the matter. The LLP didn't respond a request for comment. The spa manager reported the alleged assault at the time to the resort according to people familiar with the matter. The spa manager also told her husband about the incident, some of these people said. He drove to the WWE event with a baseball bat and tried to confront Mr. McMahon, but was turned away according to these people. The woman's lawyer, Michael Bressler, has been in touch with Mr. McMahon's attorney since at least July, according to people familiar with the discussions. California, like New York, has a new law that allows alleged victims victims of sex abuse to file lawsuits that would otherwise be barred by the statute of limitations. Starting in January, victims will have a one-year window to file such claims. Responding to a story of Vince McMahon intending to make a WWE comeback under the belief that the allegations against him and the investigations would have blown over if he stayed in the company, Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful wrote, Numerous WWE higher-ups that I've spoken to in recent months have indicated to us they want nothing to do with that and are happy with the direction. I haven't heard one person there itching for a Vince return. I should state they wanted nothing to do with a Vince comeback. We not discussed him telling people that he planned to make one. Dun dun was the phrase I got often. Going into more detail on this situation, it was reported that Fightful immediately heard from numerous staff and talent within WWE. One WWE talent called the news exhausting and was hopeful that Vince McMahon's WWE tenure was in the rear view, despite them having a positive relationship prior to McMahon leaving. Another said that they were concerned for the talent that got rehired in the event that Vince McMahon were to return. A higher up that we spoke to wasn't near nearly as concerned. Said higher up mentioned that the stock price increased, viewership was boosted, and general morale recovered after Vince McMahon left. It would be a really selfish move for Vince to come back under any circumstances. The reason he left, how business has done since then, it'd be really selfish. But selfish activities are what led to him leaving in the first place. The source said that they did not believe that Vince would return, despite having voting power within the company. And with this talk of a return for Vince McMahon to WWE, a petition has been created on Change.org 
to prevent this, with the description saying, Vincent Kennedy McMahon earlier this year was entangled in a web of deceit and scandal. He was put under investigation, which involved money and women. This image could have forever stained the company and brand known as WWE. He decided to step down in every aspect of his position. Since his departure from the company, employment has increased, revenue has increased in overall enjoyment and become a watchable product to get in grand scale. Vince McMahon stepped down so his company and brand can thrive under his daughter Stephanie McMahon and Paul Levesque has done so tenfold. Keeping Mr. McMahon away is best for his business. Help us achieve by showing we don't need him running the show anymore. The WWE company and brand has proven to be in good hands. Let's keep it that way. I mean this with all due respect to what the McMahon family has done in sports entertainment. With no recent updates regarding an AEW contract buyout for CM Punk, Ricky Starks would say this about Punk's involvement with the company, telling DAZN, the Punk thing helped. Him saying those things about me really helped. What would have been great was to actually have a match with him. Things were kind of leading up to that, I thought. That's one of the minor things that I'm actually annoyed about is that I never actually got to have a match. It's not to stroke my own ego, but it's about iron really sharpening iron. I'm the type of person who would be able to benefit from that in terms of excelling in my talent. At the time where Hobbs turned on me, I think we were already there, the crowd reacting favorably and the momentum, and it was already a rolling boil. Things had to have happened in that sense. Otherwise, to go another six or eight months and really just floating in limbo would not have been very beneficial to me, I don't think. I thought Punk, William Regal, these people that came in were great additions to the locker room. Great additions in terms of what they provided. I know personally, I was able to talk to Punk a lot and get help on my promos and things like that. Same with Regal because I've known him for so long. It was kind of a blow that both of these guys left. I am hopeful that down the line I do get that matchup. If not, I get it. That's how the business is, but it would be nice. It would be nice to be able to work with somebody of that caliber because I've yet to work with, besides Sting, I've yet to work with somebody of such a high caliber, and the Sting match was a year or two ago. Recalling his previous character of Max Dupree, LA Knight told Yahoo Entertainment, so now here comes this other character being introduced, and for those people, it was like, wait, what is this? But when you look at the numbers of a SmackDown audience, for a large swath of those people, they are seeing me for the first time. So I could have been Joe Schmo for all that matters. In a strange sense, that would have actually worked, just because three quarters of that audience is seeing me for the first time regardless of who I am. At the same time though, I think there is a matter of the shoe fitting and not. I will make any character work, but when it comes down to it, there was one that was way more me than the other one. With him having issues with his shoulder, MVP would post a video update regarding his injury. First of all, I'm not typically an AM kind of guy, you know. However, got priorities. My shoulder's a little jacked up. It's been messed up for a while since uh, Hell in a Cell pay-per-view when Bobby Lashley ran me into that post and I landed on my shoulder. But see, I'm tough, so I just pushed through it. However, it got to the point where I got to get an MRI because something in there is torn, a labrum, rotator cuff, we don't know, but we're about to find out. Just want you all to know that I'm plotting and I have plans. Shoulder or no shoulder. Sit tight. While many have been brought back under the Triple H regime, it seems there could be some issues as Wrestle Votes reported. I'm told a handful of talent brought back in the rehiring wave over the summer have underperformed and severely underwhelmed Triple H and others since returning to the company.
giving an update on Jeff Hardy's DUI trial following his arrest in June in Florida. PW Insider noted Jeff Hardy is slated for a pre-trial hearing related to his DUI-related charges in Florida next Wednesday, December 21st at 8.30 a.m. Based on court records, Hardy is required to appear before the court for the hearing. Hardy filed a written plea of not guilty filed with the court on June 28th. Hardy's attorney waived his right to a speedy trial and requested a hearing originally set for this past July to be pushed back 60 days to assist in his defense. Hardy's scheduled hearing last October was then again pushed back following a last-minute motion from his attorney that noted Hardy's attorneys recently provided extensive mitigation materials to the counsel for the state and that the parties require additional time to negotiate a potential pretrial resolution. So it would appear that the two sides are working on a plea agreement that would prevent a trial. After her shocking loss of the NXT women's title, many were thinking we'd see a main roster return for Mandy Rose. But it seems she is no longer with the company, with it reported that Fightful Select has learned that Mandy Rose has been released by WWE. WWE officials felt they were put in a tough spot based on the content she was posting on her brand army page. They felt like it was outside of the parameters of her WWE deal. This also comes after photos and videos from her exclusive page leaked and were circulating on Twitter, which led to the star trending. Given she was under a main roster contract on NXT, Rose will likely have a 90-day non-compete clause. Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer said, There's a lot to the Mandy Rose firing today, and the title change last night was a last-minute decision based on the fact she was getting fired and not the original plan. Brian Alvarez would add that Mandy Rose was very much caught off guard by the firing. Rose's faction mate, JC Jane, would react by posting broken heart emojis. Fans would also react to the release online as they wrote, Shocking. For those who want to blame WWE, they do have a policy there. She broke the policy. AEW will hire her if that's why she chooses to go. He doesn't care what kind of baggage you have. I like Mandy Rose, but she's not a victim. Well, they could have just suspended her for a few months instead of firing her. It goes beyond that. It was explicit stuff. Nipples, all that jazz. Bad look for the company to have someone doing that. I've never seen such a sudden fall like this before. And this was your pro wrestling news update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all later.